Hi, my name is In Cho from architecture firm Cho Shield Studio. We are here today in the Gramercy Park neighborhood of Manhattan, standing in front of an early 1900 masonry constructed building that we are doing a gut renovation for. And we're reaching for the passive house benefit component certification. The existing condition was two wides of brick party walls with wood joists and they had about seven, eight foot high ceilings. So our client had wanted new, finished, taller ceiling heights. So the project entailed removing all of the existing floor joists. It requires significant structural remediation, such as increasing the width of the party wall since they were too slender already for the existing condition. In addition to the fact that with the client's design request, we're going to enlarge the building both vertically by a story and a half, and as well as extend the building horizontally through the rear. So by affecting the party wall, the exterior building envelope, it was a perfect opportunity to do some passive house construction on this building. The general building existing is all masonry, it's brick. And what we've added in terms of the new addition are steel framing to replace the wood joists for the floors, as well as wherever it's new vertical addition or horizontal, we've used steel frame construction as well as wood frame construction working in conjunction with the existing walls. What all of this has created is a lot of challenges in terms of how the various building elements came together. And particularly where the old and the new would meet, that there was a lot of detailing related to Passive House. We have a south facing rear yard, but there's a huge 200 foot tall building that obstructs all the natural south facing sunlight. So we are not able to benefit from the passive solar heat game for the winter time. But we've done everything else to, for it to be fully thermally uh, well performing in terms of the building envelope. So here in the cellar, we're looking at the west party wall where we put uh, the new four inch CMU blocks up. And at each floor level where we're putting all new floor joists, the, the light gauge metal floor joists along with some structural beams, we were able to have a continuous ledge all the way through uninterrupted with joist base. This is the subfloor wood. And then we will have, this is the uh, Solitex Mentor 1000 coming up from the pocket beam and then tying into the Stowe Emerald Coated CMU wall uh, together with the Tescon Vana tape. So this is our air seal for the party wall here. Then coming up, we transition into the new light gauge metal stud uh, two hour non-combustible party wall framing construction. Uh, in front of it is the dense glass gypsum for fire rating and then onto that we'll put Stowe Emerald Coat for air sealing. It transitions here, uh, butting into the north uh, masonry existing party wall. In front of this, we'll have wood frame service cavities with insulation up to R20, interior insulation, into the existing brick masonry here. We have our one inch structural parging, and then we have a four inch uh, gap here, which we will be infilling with uh, Roxel insulation. That's mineral, 4.2 per inch. This is the concrete curb on the east side. Behind this dense glass exterior gypsum fire rated wall is the light gauge metal framing, 16 inches in the center, and in between we have 6 inches of Roxel mineral wool insulation. Fit really snug. This here you see is actually the service cavity. So what's happening is we're putting in wood service cavities wherever it faces with the exterior, and then where it's interior, we actually face the service cavity with light gauge field framing. This point right here was the former existing building rear. What we've done is the whole back has been removed in order to extend the building horizontally another four foot six inches. In doing so, we had to add in a portion that's a poured in place vertical concrete section that is poured in order to receive the steel beams that are connecting to the column over here back to the building onto which you have the light gauge metal stud framing infill for the exterior wall. Here we are standing in the rear of the building. This is actually the rear extension. It extended uh, about four foot six inches from the former building rear, which is further back over there. You can see at the vertical column, the steel going up the full height of the building and every floor level, there's a beam that's tied as a moment front connection. You can see on the upper level that there's within the beam cavities and the column cavities and the flanges and the web that we also have insulation in there. 
And up above on the third floor where we have the balconies, there's a cantilever beam going from the inside to the out to support the balconies. And at the connection to the column, there's a thermal brake detail there by using the shock product. And then in the front and rear for the framing, where we weren't required to use two-hour non-combustible party wall construction, and where we were allowed to use some wood product, we used fire retardant wood, uh, two by six wood framing in between the windows. And as you can see on the rear side, there isn't that much solid wall surface. So we took advantage of that and switched from metal stud to wood framing to maximize the insulation value of the wall. So here, we're now standing on the fourth floor terrace. We're by the window installation of the exterior, whether it's wood framed or light gauge metal framed. We have extra seal for the sill area around the windows and the jam as it, as it uh, climbs up. It's sitting on top of, of wood blocking as well as XPS insulation, minimum inch and a half thick, ideally two. In front of the two layers of dense glass fire rated gypsum exterior wall, we have the wall assembly system of Cascadia clips, four inches of the four inch dimension uh, of mineral wool, and then the one inch Z-girt, uh, which creates the rain screen uh, gap. And then onto this, we will have on the front facade, we're going to have plywood, another weather sealer, and then cement shingles. On the party walls, it'll be a similar assembly, but instead of wood framing, it'll be light gauge metal stud framing with the rest of the same four inch of mineral wool with Cascadia clips and z -girts. And then it will have cement lap siding for fire non-combustibility. The other thing that we've achieved is installing the Lam & Lux Passive House Certified Triple Glaze Skylight. That's way up on the roof bulkhead. Eventually, I think the entire construction system is going to be like this. After doing this house and seeing how this is working out, I was actually talking to the architect of the project and showed to uh, that I'm doing my personal house as a passive house system. In told me about this, my architect, when she was, um, you know, encouraging me to go with this, she had said it's a very environmentally friendly building process and the house you live in is um, very healthy. It's a healthy home and you kind of hear it and you don't, it goes in and you're like, okay, so it's a healthy home. But I really feel these two things. One is that you're always comfortable. And, and the other thing is that it's, it's healthy air. That's huge. And then the third thing which you can tell yourself, you can't hear anything, this construction going on outside. You don't hear a thing. This project has been a, a huge journey into the world of Passive House. Uh, working with an existing building condition propose so many interesting, unique building detail challenges, dealing with building code for fire, to structural stability, to dealing with thermal bridging, dealing with air tightness between neighbors, working with masonry, poured in place concrete, light gauge structural steel, structural steel construction. It pretty much ran the gamut of all the different construction types that you can do and it got fit into a 5,000 square foot project. So it's really like a diamond in the rough and it's got all the fancy, cool, unique details that any project could ask for and more. And what we realized in going through this process is that we could not have done it without the support of the Passive House community, such as 475, you know, who supply many of the building materials here. They've been so instrumental in giving us proper guidance. We really had to have an active dialogue with all the trades, uh, consultants, mechanical engineers, structural engineers, you know, Passive House community. It really requires teamwork. In a nutshell, I think be living in a Passive House is having the ultimate homeliness that you want in a home and and the best metaphor for it is being in your mother's womb you're insulated you're protected but as yet you have everything you need you have fresh air you are you're surrounded by the perfect temperature you're living in the perfect temperature and you're coddled